Hi and welcome to the third part of the WebXR indoor navigation tutorial. After a long time, I finally was able to finish it and I proudly present, uh, I would say, full working indoor navigation for WebXR with one little flaw and I'll just spoiler you right now, the line renderer is not working correctly in AR mode from 3GS, but I'm on it and hopefully I will be able to fix it within the next days. But nevertheless, the navigation itself works. It, in this case, just shows a few cubes at the vertices of the calculated path. But um, I guess let's just dive into it. And first of all, I wanted to show you what we are going to have a look at today. So this is the recording of my smartphone screen. You can move around the geometry with the orbit controls from 3JS, zoom out, zoom in, <coughs> start the AR mode. And within the start AR node, AR mode, you can scan the marker. We already had it in part two, and the lighting is not perfect, so it will be a little bit, I would say, tilted. Let's have a look. Um, yes, it's tilted. Mm, let's see. Maybe we can rearrange it by again scanning the marker. And you will obviously have noticed the buttons at the top. We'll have a look at them in a second. And now let's see. Ah, uh, yes, perfect. The navigation is guiding me to the kitchen. The geometry is not perfectly set up, but that's not the thing here. As you can see, the last red cube is at the target. This is the blue cube over here. And if I walk around, the cubes where I passed already are gone. So the path is calculated in real time. And we're now choosing the living room. We're going back to the living room, guided by our red cubes, which are occluded by the walls and guiding us back to the green cube. So that's basically the navigation part and it's working pretty nice. And I'd say, let's have a look at the code and let's see what you have to do to build it. So first of all, let's start with the index HTML as you hopefully remember from the second part. If not, feel free to watch it again. We have our two markers here and we have two additional buttons here, which are the targets. That's basically all for the indoor navigation part where I can just add targets here. Oh, I see this is still running, so let's just cancel it. And in the style says, I'm just modifying the targets to be shown again. The wrapper too, I guess, if anybody's more familiar with the web part, you can still clean it up. Um, and please don't be confused. Confused. There is a main JS and a main JS old in here. The old one is just as a reference for the second part where everything was written in one big JS file. But I got so tired of scrolling, so I decided to give it a shot and just refactor it in a more object-oriented way. And don't worry, we'll just um, I will just walk you through. If you're not that interested, you can just skip to a later, a later part of the section where I just tell you where to add targets and how to configure them. So first of all, we're going to get our scene container, create a new internet, instance of a class, and waiting for all the initialization to finish. And after that, we're just starting the internet navigation. So that's, I guess, as simple as possible. And in the indoor navigation class, and this is where it's get a little where it's getting a little bit more complicated. I'm just doing all the 3GS stuff, creating a camera, creating a render, creating a scene, and a new instance of the loop class, which will take care of all the update loops. So we don't have to add the renderer all the time and calling the render method. So we're just adding everything to the update loop. This update loop is called every frame that's rendered and it's calling a method called tick. So it's more like an ECS style. And if you're curious about how to implement such things, feel free to check out 3gsjourney.com. I was heavily inspired by the course of, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, Bruno Shimon. I hope that's right. If you're looking at this, if not, I'm sorry, please leave a comment and <laughs> correct me. Um, I highly recommend it. It's a very, very good course, even for beginners and feel free to just drop by. Um, furthermore, we're just creating the controls, the lights, the updatables. That's what, what, what I was talking about. Adding the scene, adding the resizer, and 
again, setting up the internet navigation. There is also part here for ARJS. Um, this is not working correctly as ARJS and uh, I would say the normal AR mode are not working well together. So I'll just leave this here for reference, but it's not working for in the navigation part. So here's the render function, the start function, the stop function for our looping class, and that's basically the main class and all the magic happens here. Going on to the navigation area class, this is basically, well, it's not a class to be honest, it's more like a function export where we are going to create our navigation area. I'll just create in cubes with an occluder material that's basically, that's actually the same as we had in the second part. And the only thing that I have here is that I forgot to delete all the commented stuff from experimenting, which I will do now and later on commit to the repository, which can also be found on GitHub. And that's basically it. Yeah. The same goes mostly for the image tracking part. Here we go for the create image tracking WebXR, as I, as I said before, ignore the ARGS part. And one of the things I added here is that we are adding a reference for the navigation area geometry object for hopefully placing our targets in the path the right way. The same goes for the pathfinding stuff. This is new, by the way. The pathfinding method exporter creates us a new instance of the pathfinding WebXR class, which will take the camera and the navigation area parent for calculating the path every update to a specific target, which we can choose from by pressing the buttons in the upper right, as we saw here. Maybe that's the difference. If we go back a little bit, that was actually pretty good. Here we go. You can see it over here. You can just add buttons there and select the target you want to navigate to. Let's have a look at the image tracking WebXR class I added to getters for the marker world position and the rotation. The rotation is not used, by the way, it's just for completion, maybe for future um, features. Um, this is just to check if we already scan the marker. So the mark is not directly connected to the target where we're um, routing to. So the path calculation and the markers are separated and the markers are just for referencing ourselves within the space. In this, in this case, it's my flat. And the pathfinding itself works within this space. So it's a little bit complicated to explain, but I'll get deeper into that as we are continuing with that path finding WebXR class. Um, just as a additional information, if you're curious about how this works, check out the second part. It's basically the same code, just export it or move to a separate class and a little bit tidy it up. Um, there are still ways you can make this way better. So feel free to um, give me a comment or just um, ping me on Twitter or something with good ideas or even your own implementations. In the Pathfinding WebXR class, we're just going to load our navigation mesh. I will come to that in a second too. And based on that navigation mesh, we're creating a line. This line is not rendered correctly at the moment. So we'll see if that will be fixed within the next days. And the buttons we added before, like the kitchen target, and the living room target are here and they're setting a target position on our navigation mesh. And the routing will route us from the current position where we are standing. This means from the camera position on our navigation mesh to this, I would say, target position, not only temporary, but the target position. And here we go to the start position. This is only for setting the start position and a little debugging, just if you want to, it's not needed to um, show the cubes here. This is for setting the target position. And in the calculate path method, we're just checking if there is a marker tracked. This means we're um, showing the geometry, the occluding walls, the floor texture. You can also disable the floor texture 
if you want to, in the navigation area part, it's over here, the floor plane mesh visible flag set to false at the, uh, set to true at the moment. You can just set it to false if it's disturbing or something else. And based on that, we're going to get the camera position. We're transforming it to the local space of our navigation area and setting the navigation start to the camera position, getting our navigation end from our temp target position, setting everything here. It's a little bit too complicated. Maybe I'll simplify it in a future version. And then this is where the magic happens, the find path method from the 3GS path finding. We will, I will show you in a minute how to set it up. And if this path is found, I'll just add navigation cubes for showing the way as the line currently is not rendering, even though we're setting the line geometry from points from our path. It works if we're not in AR, so it's just not working in AR. So that's unfortunate. Um, and that's basically it. Everything else is just 3GS um, in a more object oriented way. But for the calcul for the path calculation for the in the navigation itself, you need two more things. First of all, you're needing the three path finding from Don McCurdy. Again, if you're looking this and I pronounced the name wrong, please feel free to correct me. Um, this is a very easy to use framework. I'll just installed the package in the three path finding. And as it says here, you will need a navigation mesh for this. So I create the navigation mesh using Blender or Recast didn't work for me. Why? Um, there is a link from the GitHub repository here, creating an F mesh where he's explaining from 2017 how to create an F mesh in Blender and for every um, Blender user here, I'm pretty sure you know that the navigation mesh creation from Blender is no longer available. I think since 2.8, 3.1, 3.0, I don't know, 2.8, I guess. And as an alternative, you can still use the Blender game engine. It's a, as far as I know, a Blender fork with the game engine parts included. <coughs> And that didn't work out for me. I don't know why the nav mesh creation didn't work for me. So I created a floor mesh in Blender itself. Just um, deleted a few vertices from a normal plane. As you can see here, the plane, etc., etc. And I exported it as a GLTF. And then I went on to the nav mesh generator from Isaac Mason and just dropped my floor mesh over here. And then I left everything else at the default and then I clicked on generate nav mesh. And if I now rotate it, you can see that my floor mesh is here, the white one, and the yellow or orange one is the nav mesh. And you can export this as a GLTF and this is the nav mesh GLTF you can find here within our project in the static folder. And that's it. So I integrated the nav mesh, did my path calculation, added the nav mesh as a mesh for the path finding, which is done in the initialization of the path finding. Here we go. Here is the loader for the GLTF. I loaded the nav mesh, added it to my navigation area, created a new buffer geometry, set the visible to false, Created the zone data pathfinding dot create zone nav mesh geometry, and to set the zone data with the zone name and the previously created data, and that's it basically. So we can still watch this in the browser. Just start it on. Open yes please, and if I now rotate my geometry, it's not showing anything. We are going to refresh it, and here it is. Here's the geometry. Uh, everything is created. I have my zone, I have my data, everything else is here. And we have two image bitmaps for recentering our position within the geometry.
Well, um, basically that's it. That's the upgrade for the WebXR. Um, into navigation, it's pretty straightforward. Please have a look. The GitHub repo link is in the description box as always. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. Um, please like and subscribe. I ring that notification bell. It really helps the channel growing. And, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.